Greetings, my name is Mark Goodair, and I'm very, very excited to be at Imagine 2024. And I'm sitting with my new friend, Alex, uh, who represents the automation program at Cornerstone. So Alex, Cornerstone, huge building supplies company, I believe, right? That's correct. Awesome, so tell us a little bit about the automation program there, kind of how it got off the ground, your experience with it. Yeah, so I think it started slow, like uh, many uh, RPA programs uh, do, with sort of feeling out proof of concepts, uh, trying to get a couple production automations in place. Yes. Uh, I came in with some expertise about six months after they started their program and uh, was able to start to really operationalize yep. uh, their ideas, uh, put in place governance, and uh, stand up a center of excellence. Through evangelism, we've been able to sort of uh, find ideas, uh, sort of wall to wall at Cornerstone across all sorts of functions and business units, um, and really s sit there and uh, vet the business processes for right tool selection, Yes. partner with them for the transformation of the work they're doing, and in the end, um, build a lot of bots uh, to help work it done. How do you get your business stakeholders excited about what's potential, what the potential is these days? Like what's possible with the technology? Did you find like out of the box, they all kind of understood it or you had to spend some time with some education and, and that? So they, they, they all still don't understand it. <laughs> okay. You know, it's so continual evangelism. So if you're running a program and you're not talking to a business function or a small group once a month, you're probably not doing enough. Right. Um, so I find lots of opportunities at other gatherings, whether it's finance or operations managers, to get a half an hour in and sort right. of just push, push the issue. Um, canned demos are a great way, uh, especially with your own data, with systems that they're familiar with. Yes. Being able to show them that you've successfully integrated inside of your company yes. is important. Um, and then uh, the other advice is really start small if you can afford it, right? You know, I mean, I, I know we're after value all the time delivering value, but um, proof of concepts, small uh, custom automations for smaller groups, just to get something running for them. Right, right. And that typically leads to bigger ideas. Some quick so, wins. Well, yeah, yeah, quick wins and then either bigger ideas or you start to expand from that limited scope up and down the uh, process chain. Yes, no, I love that. So uh, we're actually doing a session at Imagine specifically talking about how you articulate the, the value proposition of an automation. Because that's something a lot of people struggle with. There's a hyper focus on productivity. Absolutely. Right? We, we want efficiency. But then I think we were talking earlier about um, it's great when you can kind of branch off and say, no, automation can help us in other ways. Cost avoidance, things like that. Absolutely. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, so for our program, uh, we do something at the very beginning before we have a qualified project called okay. a business value assessment. Okay. And during that business value meeting, the sponsor of the, the champion of the process uh, needs to communicate to us across, we really measure five buckets. Okay. Uh, three of them uh, being soft savings, two of them being hard savings. And um, we document that, right? So we have this business case, we do a level of effort assessment. Excellent. And then that really determines whether we're gonna move forward with the project or right. not. And um, that's been very well received by our CFO. Yes. Right, to understand that uh, the automation program is not just an expense line. Right. right? We can actually uh, not only point to numbers, but validate those numbers with those business owners yes. who are going to stand behind it. Yes. And so um, it's a very, it, I try not to make it too formal, but right, there needs to be an understanding among the stakeholders that they are signing up, that the business is receiving value from the automation. Yes. Right. Yes. It's, it's not a uh, nice to have. It's really going to fund additional growth inside of their funnel. Oh, that's awesome. We do exactly the same thing within automation anywhere, the same thing. So uh, I, I can approve an idea, but that's actually not good enough. That value proposition right. needs to be FP&A stamped. So Absolutely. some business stakeholder says, we've got an awesome automation, it's gonna save us this, this kind of money. Even our finance FP&A team says, prove it, that's right? Which, which is, which I love that, right? Absolutely, I mean, I have, I have some latitude, right, where we're taking on uh, projects to get into a new functional area. Mm -hmm. Right, or to do yes. the evangelism I'm talking about, right? Yes. And so, you know, typically those might be 100, 200 hour a year type projects, yes. Yes. but they're also sort of deprioritized from my developer standpoint, right? right. Um, I like to load my developers up with two or three projects, right? Right, so that they're always having work and we're waiting for stakeholders, waiting for credentials, waiting for access, yes. right? They can always fall back to other projects. Um, yes. And that's, that's, it's been effective. Like I said, we've been able to grow and then um, we've been able to demonstrate really nice ROI. Oh, that's awesome. 
So, th so this whole AI thing, I don't know if you've heard about this, uh, this whole AI. No, I'm, <laughs> so, I'm oblivious to it. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, last year at Imagine, uh, that was a major focus, right? Everything that was happening sure. with generative AI, and specifically the impacts of generative AI on, on automation, how they yeah. played well together. Um, this year, that's gone to an entirely different level. Um, we're about to listen to Mihir's keynote, the product keynotes. That will be a, a major emphasis, right? How we're uh, bringing brand new business value by adding the AI power to automation. How are you guys thinking about that at, at Cornerstone, at that, the potential of generative AI on your automation program? Well, uh, 2023 was the year people rediscovered AI. Right. Right. And so at Cornerstone, we have a strategic initiative this year to implement uh, AI and ML solutions. And okay. So um, I'm leading that from an IT standpoint, and we've really found that back to the whole RPA use cases, it's start small, some start with something that's known. So we're doing some classical ML optimization, okay. categorization. Uh, we've actually just recently uh, introduced some gen AI and uh, it's actually integrating with an Automation Anywhere product. product. Okay. So uh, through our IDP process, we're taking inbound sales orders, but customers don't name our products the same as we name our products. Right. right? And then so the capability to match the customer's name to the SKU in our system yes. is very difficult, mm. right? And we probably could have created some complex fuzzy logic and regex, but uh, Gen AI was a much simpler way to do this. Yes. And so after the extraction of a product, uh, we would run it through a prompt chain, uh, coach it with a few prompts uh, to get it down to our Oracle naming definition of our products gotcha. and then feed it back into our system. And that's working quite well. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. You know, we're also experimenting with you know, chat with documents, mm -hmm. obviously a, a, a big focus for organizations that want to keep their data separated. Yes. Um, and then, you know, from a long-term standpoint, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really seeing RPA as a, as the hands and feet of a Gen AI brain, an engine mm -hmm. that can make decisioning um, so one of the benefits of being a COE was that we're already very um, comfortable with making tool selection. Right. Uh, I would say that less than half of the requests I get end up being automations. Uh, you know, a lot of times it's discovery on what's the software capable of, what does the application yes. do, who can configure that application, right? Is the business using it the right way? Right. And so when you get new ideas, and people are very attracted to the idea of Gen AI or just AI in general, yep. right? Finding, is it the right fit? Yes. Is so important. Yes. Um, you know, not only to deliver value, but also are you going to be successful? Yes, yes. Um, so, yeah, I'm very excited to see what uh, you guys at Automation Anywhere have done uh, yes. in that area. Yes. And, uh, you know, start to be able to operationalize uh, in a quicker fashion. Yes. You know, I think that's one of the the leading cases for yes. RPA and process automation in general is that you don't have to wait that long development cycle. That, that's right. that's su that's been exactly our experience as well. So internally within our own automation program in Automation Anywhere, we just went live on number 25. So the 25th generative AI enabled automation. Okay. That was one of the things that kind of surprised us. The value we kind of expected would be there, but the time to value is so much shorter, which has Excellent. been cool, yeah. right? So um, we found that once you get the foundation in place, once you kind of get your arms around what this thing is, Absolutely. Some, some basic AI policies and things like that, yes. time to value doesn't need to be six and eight months. All of a sudden it's you know, six weeks and you're getting, you're getting value. So. Yeah, our, our first couple of projects are in the six to nine month time frame now, but yep. a lot of that work is developing the infrastructure, yes. developing the rules, creating yes. the menu for the business, yes. understanding how we're gonna account for it, right? All of yes. these, uh, you know, they're not the um, headline, you know, announcements. It's all of the hard work that has to get done yes. behind the scenes in IT in order to implement solutions. Alex, thank you so much for the time today. This is a super interesting conversation. Um, we learned a few th really interesting things uh, from Alex. Clearly, he's, you, can, you can hear the sound of someone that's seasoned in this. He understands automation. We talked about the importance of uh, evangelism. Right? Absolutely. You talked about you better be talking with your business stakeholders on a regular basis to make sure they understand the art of the possible and, and hone these ideas. Uh, we talked about different ways of looking at business value, not just about productivity, but considering cost savings and cost avoidance, all these, these other potential benefits. Um, and that message of, of uh, starting small to demonstrate the case, make a case for it, and then, and then scaling up. You did a great job, Mark. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks to you, Alex, and uh, good luck with your automation program.